Welcome to Fontribute, where we talk about fonts and their attributes. Fontribute, it's me, Thomas, again. So this week, I was going through the Font Stand collection, and Font Stand is a great resource if you're looking for fonts to rent. Uh, the first hour is free, and the fonts are pretty reasonable in their rental fees. And I ran into the Emigre catalog and discovered a typeface I've ever seen when I was younger called Electric. And uh, I thought it was a really interesting design approach uh, in terms of uh, the, how weight was handled for this kind of non-connected cursive upright scripts, monolinear uh, contrast form. It's very fascinating. Uh, so I just figured it, it, it just caught my attention and I figured it'd be a great opportunity to talk about how weight is handled across uh, a, type, a typeface style family. Uh, between the two parts. So let's get started. So uh, as you can see here, we have the light and the bold represented. And the predominant note you should notice as we're going into the forms is some general, just formal qu quality differences. So one is notice the round terminal approach right in the light versus the flatness and terminals across all of, of the bold. So take note of that first uh, distinction. Uh, there, as I said before, this seems to be a upright uh, cursive design in the sense that uh, we look at the branching from the joint position of the from the joint into the stem over here, right? Notice how low it is. This is considered a very low branch. This is probably the, the lowest level of a branch possible, right? Versus a higher branch, like so, over here as I just drew. So. We would say this is a very low branching. It's a continuous. It's a continuous stroke. There's no breaking in the stroke. It feels very much like the stroke was a continuous line. And in fact, in some ways, this is almost. Uh, you can kind of get. If you look at it a little too long, uh, I feel like there's a. You kind of forget it's a lowercase n. In some case, uh, I'm, as I'm looking, staring at it more intently. It's very low contrast in the lightweight, especially the relationships of the strokes are relatively close together. Uh, it appears that this horizontal, this diagonal is heavier than the vertical, right? But very, by a very small amount. Uh, while there, while there's actually a change of contrast that's higher in the bold. So this this follows traditional type design principles: is that uh, a lighter weight has lower has low contrast. The heavier the weight gets, the higher the contrast goes. So again, contrast is a relationship of different weight of the part of the thickest part to the thinnest parts. So it's almost like it's like a one to one point two, right? If I had to put a mathematical equation to it, versus uh, say we let's say the thinnest part is a one, this heavy part right here is probably like a two, maybe maybe a one point eight or something. Uh, more exaggerating with the one point with the one to two ratio, but you get the idea. Is that there's a increase in variance between the two. However, uh, besides some the distinctions of, of contrast and weight uh, and, ter and, and terminal approach, uh, notice just the complete bouncy feeling. This gives a very cur very casual feeling right here uh, between based on where the where the imagine where the baseline is, right, and how this terminal on uh, this side of the stem is different in a different position than the than the position on this on the left side of the stem. So very crazy bouncy. Uh, and even within the two, with, between the two styles, while it's similar on the baseline area, on the A center's A center X height zone, excuse me, uh, it's notice the inversion. Notice it's lower. The shoulder over here is lower than the stem in the light, while in the in the bold, it's in a higher position compared to the stem on the left. So the style, as you can tell, the big theme is. Uh, it has a lot of variance between the light and the and the bold weight between the two. All right, moving on to the O, as if the N was not already demonstrating some clear differences. Notice the beyond the terminals, the the curve profile, and even the whole construction of this O. Right, this, look at this O. It has this break right here on the on the bottom uh, left segment towards the baseline. Uh, which is with an open with a uh, open area right here. Now that open area is maintained in the bowl, but notice instead of a round profile, instead we have this kind of like very rigid blocky approach 
uh, kind of like Super Mario Brothers in some ways. It's fascinating. Uh, with some flaring, apparently, so the stroke is thinner here than than out here, for example. Uh, notice this is almost a weight distribution handling here. Notice how it's the thickest parts right here, and it thins out over here. Uh, it's a very irregular form overall, and 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 distribution of weight. In fact, since uh, notice the heaviness of this one segment over here versus, you know, I'm going to categorize these two as territories versus uh, the consistency of the weights across the whole form and the light direction. They both are playing with an axis. They have an implied axis or tilt, basically, in this case. So the D is now we combine the round and the straight together. And some of the earlier templates we saw in the N and the O, we're starting to see apply to the D. So we're going from the round of the O, the similar approach, right? The smoothness and the lights versus the rigidness and the bold. Now look at the tapering expansion on the terminal of the A center of electric bold versus the consistency and just kind of straight rigidness, like, like this little straight line uh, affecting the electric. Notice the change in depth of the descender territories over here in the on the X on the baseline territory between the two. It actually, it looks actually they appear to be similar in this case. They're both the this area goes lower than the angle territory on the right stem. The, the branching doesn't seem as high. For example, if I had, if I mirror, if I looked at the N by itself, I would have expected something maybe even crazy like that, way up. Uh, notice the, the, the position of the branch is much lower. Let's see if other designs, uh, letters par par parody that going forward. Onto the G, we do see some similarity in the basic structure, right? It's a stroke up here then around, and then up, down, and over, right? Here, it's the same base implied idea, but notice again the rigidness we saw in the O applied in this lowercase g of electric. And again, the tapering. In this case, it's a thinning over here, uh, leading to a thickness over here. So in some cases, the terminals go out to expansion, right, expand out, and other areas they taper, they taper it out as they go towards the terminal. Notice both of these are, are lower or two or the one story form of the G, right? This one story form, as opposed to we see in usually in Romans and some in some italics oblique, the two story form I just drew. Uh, and again, when you have an A, a G that's one that's one story, sometimes you see a, an A in a one story, and they again the parody of the forms. Just take note of that. Uh, there's a fun move, actually, I'm gonna ch Check back to see. Yeah, so notice both of these have a curvature down, right? Let's let while maintain this open aperture position over here. Notice the lack of this cur of this closing move over here in the one story A form. Notice that variance for the lower uh, the G form. Just if I draw it again, just so you know what I'm talking about, right? It had a little curvature going towards the stem in a lower position, as I just marked up. The S is actually a very fun one, especially uh, especially in the light, right? Because you have this straight, straight line, and then it goes whoop, like very rapid curve, those little curve segments, and then these eight kind of terminal serifs drawn up. While in the electric, I actually, you know, again, it, it has this kind of, it tries to maintain this kind of pointy triangle effect right here, which is, but not repeated uh, over here, right, and it just goes sheared over here, and instead there's a tapering uh, in this terminal over here, which is not the case over here. Uh, meanwhile, as we saw, because there's much more, basically what you should be noticing is in the electric light, just a kind of more, way more consistency in the terminals. One, because there's just less variance of the of strokes, right? There's less, in, there's less inclusion of contrast in the forms, right, compared to you know, all this tearing and shearing of letters of weight, uh, notice in the light that's not occurring across. Uh, but the base idea letter is con relatively consistent between the two. 
on the italic F, well, we can see the uh, this kind of attempt of a, of a hook over here and then pff, straight down shot likewise. And again, this really demonstrates the approach, the contrast, the variance. No one should spin this tapers out over here. And likewise, the tapering on this side versus this side. Both of these kind of have, instead of right across, they have this kind of casual sloping downward approach, right? You notice that in the crossbar of the lowercase f. And notice this is the case actually with the descender territory. Notice that both of them go descend below that, uh, but in different degree of severity. It's more severe in the lightweight. And there's like an itty bitty negative side bearing on both of these, on the right side bearing. So panned out to the, now we're starting to look at other letters. Uh, we can actually see a pretty strong variance of ascender, right, compared to uh, the bold component. Uh, and there's actually just a lot of variance going on. Notice that there's, it, it's opened up over here on the lightweight versus connected up in the, ca in the capital, right, extends over to the right on this side versus not, not doing that on the bold. Notice again the the, the expansion of when something moves up to the A center, it seems to gain weight, and as it goes down, it loses weight, which is maintained in these stems, which is not applied to the lightweight. <laughs> Notice that. And overall, this is actually a pretty narrow H, I would say, uh, right compared to their lowercase uh, partners. Yeah, they seem relatively narrow in comparison. So checking the accent characters, uh, you know, it's kind of what you would predict, right? In terms of a right, very monolinear approach, I would say on these guys, right? A little sharp, a little bent over try approach over here. I do like this kind of wobbly effect on those uh, diaries over there. It's kind of fun. Uh, and likewise with the quotation marks. Actually, it was interesting even seeing with the high, you can actually really tell how gigantic the X height is relative to the cap high position, right? We can look at those two and see that difference. And it's an incredible amount of variation, actually, in the light. You can see, like, in the position and shaping of the quote marks, right? And how curves are handled in the question mark. And then going into the accents, uh, I'm a little surprised there's not more shearing in the acute and grave approach. Uh, and there here's to be, like, an introduction of contrast in the circumflex. And the tilde has the heaviest part in the middle, right? So the character we saw before in the in the weight distribution for the bolt applies out in the accent characters. And likewise with the quote question mark, the kind of how hand, rounds are handled pa plays parity uh, in the quote mark. Surprisingly, actually, a little different in the right this kind of match in this approach versus what's handled up in the the light. The numbers are fun because they're 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 aligning figures. Excuse me, they're not aligning. They're old style, uh, ranged figures, right? Notice the notice the three, the four, the five, the seven, the nine, uh, descend, right? While some's like some go up to the eight center territory, like the six and the eight, for example. So that's actually a really I actually really appreciate that. I think it's a really fun move. Uh, to add a lot of fun, like kind of character and numbers for its design, and I think it actually it's pretty. I like the, the flavor and character of it, especially the lights. I think it's a really nice approach. Uh, the six is a little questionable in its proportion. I think the nine is actually, it's a pretty nice move. Uh, I do think the six is a little uh, teeny tiny in that position, right? And it's a general proportion. The And the bold weight, yeah, it maintains this kind of Super Mario Brothers bat, uh Say by the bell effect. <laughs> I, was, I was trying to wait for my metaphorical referencing of genres or aesthetic until the end, but I couldn't help myself. These numbers really do feel like that in a lot of ways. Uh, with the angleness of all the approaches, right? Uh, the tapering effects, the expansion over here, right? So now we get to... Let's see how this works out in text, right? And it behaves. And in general, yeah, you... you they have a similar skeleton, yet you're starting to sense, you know, there's a difference in the feeling of the two, right? So 
I really love the numbers, and I feel like this is such a casual feeling in the light. It almost feels like this is like uh, one of those composition notebooks, and this, song, this is someone with a really pretty good handwriting writing this book <laughs> uh, in the light. And the bold feels like Beavis and Budhead do, does America in terms of just this tone and feeling. It's like a quasi-gothic uh, black letter with a kind of nativity, uh, really toothiness to it. Right, It's really chunky and really uh, textured in effect with a kind of a black letter intonation or tone behind itself. Uh, Base draw from the same skeleton as the upright uh I would say I feel like in some cases the 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 spacing feels really nice and I think it's actually a pretty I actually the reason why I like this typeface was I felt like I had a nice tempo, nice spacing arrangement in the light. Like I actually go, I kind of enjoy re reading this in the light. While in the bold, uh, I think it's perfectly adequate, right? But I don't think it's as strong as it could be. It's almost like I kind of wish there was a medium that kind of can bridge the gap between these two. I actually think there's a moment where I wish there was something in between these two movements. Uh, maybe the bowl is just, a, it's just, it's just a, a, a move too far in comparison to the two. I do feel like a little bit that, like, especially like the, the S does feel kind of heavy, right? I'm seeing in settings uh, in general. Yeah, and then things like the extreme tapering, like in the L's, for example, it just don't seem to hold up. It's not enough to pull it off. Uh Right, and that's kind of the you know what what kind of works really well like Fresno in the lights that kind of gets crowded and doesn't really harp play out as effective in the bold weight and likewise for like California like the spacing setup just feels you know kind of more resolved than this uh, LIF spacing especially in the and then the O O O R N like a uh, the O R N space especially if I clear if I clear out so you can see what I'm looking at. Yeah, like that ORN space, right, compared to two. I feel like the light pulls it off better because the negative space is playing. Actually, the OR, right, between these two especially, you can really see that. Which one is more successful is the lightweight and its spacing. And especially when you put it next to the, L the LIF, right? But to be fair, it is a tough one that way that F is drawn. It makes it really challenging. You can't get that spacing right. Uh, actually, I don't know, maybe it's the case of like this, maybe too, ag too aggressive of a current on that o on the FO, the, on the bold that caused that. Not too sure yet. I couldn't verify. But, yeah, then I'm looking at things like losses with the two S's. I feel like the spacing is a little too loose, especially like compared with the A and D. So I just think systematically the spacing of the bold is, uh, fortunately, uh, I think the addition of the weight with this kind of quasi-upright cursive, semi-non-connected terminal stroke system uh, doesn't, it, the system that can't survive doesn't hold up to it as successful as the lightweight direction did at this at this scale and size so i couldn't help myself with nirvana and, and like the 90s aesthetic here uh i yeah i do find you know it's just it's just more stability and kind of more resolveness uh in the lightweight right but i do i do enjoy just like the, the kind of fervidness of this crazy tone of the of the adding of the weights and the contrast that came up with that uh i do appreciate it uh you know, I just think just the tone of this is, is very much, like I said, like it's almost like the agenda here was just like kind of, like I said, like this is the handwriting in the composition book. This is the Beavis and Budhead poster that was like folded inside uh, of that said composition notebook from high school. Uh, just in, ter in terms of the overall uh, feeling I'm getting from looking at the, how the weight distribution was handled and the, how the terminals are handled. Right, but they're both both from the same skeleton form. Like they're both calling from their their relations because of their skeleton, of of the composition. It was you can see is is very similar of the two. Like they're very pulling from each other. There's some variants like kind of like I said before, like the H before the A applies as well. Uh, but like I said, I do find overall in terms of the whole design program, I think the light pulls it off more successfully. But I do appreciate the candor and the fervidness of the approach in electric bold tries to achieve so yeah like i said this feels like you know as i said the life feels like an upright cursive from high school and the aggressive grunge and woodblocky aesthetic of the bold uh means these two while having a similar skeleton really achieved different results when applied so consider using the electric lights when you if you wanted this kind of like uh what napoleon dynamite-esque high school referencing 
with a little more sweeter tone to it. Uh, but when with a more aggressive heart, where I got more uh, kind of toothy, like kind of toothy, aggressive, kind of, but not, but not too serious tone. Like this is not like a like a Frankfurt Gothic. You know what I mean? Like it's not uh, super serious about itself. Then the aggressive grunge and woodblock aesthetic of the electric bowl might be the move to go. Uh, so if you have a project that kind of requires both tones and both uh, feelings, and I think you think electric's worth your consideration to revive yourself. It's not you talk about it very often. Um, you know, I always forget that electric exists in the in the library of Emigre. I do think it's I do I do think it's a, it's a worthy project of investigation, and there are a lot of fun moves uh, in the approach. It's a very unusual project. I'd be the first to tell you that. But I think a lot of the charm comes from its unconventionalness. So I think it's worth in, uh, worth your consideration if it, pro if it warrants your use in the project. So this has been Type Thursday and a project of Type Thursday. Uh, this is Fontribute. This has been Thomas. And I hope you all enjoyed yourself in this session. What do you guys think? Did you enjoy this exploration? Is there something you would like me to go over next? Please let me know in the comments. And I look forward to talking to you next week. Take care. Bye.